Hi, I'm Dr. Frederick Strathman, Assistant Professor of Pathology at the University of Utah and Medical Director in Toxicology at AUP Laboratories. In the next few minutes, I'll provide a quick overview of the basics of time-of-flight mass spectrometry. Like most mass spectrometry techniques, a chromatographic separation is the first step in the analysis and provides the first layer of compound identification, a retention time. For liquid chromatography, each compound in the sample distributes between the continuously flowing liquid mobile phase and the stationary phase. Compounds that tend to stay associated with the mobile phase will quickly pass through the column. In contrast, compounds that tend to associate with the stationary phase will pass more slowly through the column. Each compound will have a characteristic time it takes for that compound to pass through the column, and we refer to this as the retention time. So as compounds pass through the, and exit the column, they need to be detected or measured in some way. To be measured by mass spectrometry, the liquid sample first has to be transformed into a gas, and each compound has to be given either a positive or a negative charge to form an ion. This process is commonly referred to as ionization and can be accomplished by numerous methods. From this point forward, each corresponding ion is identified by the mass spectrometer based upon its mass to charge ratio. For small compounds like drugs, only a single charge is typically present, so the mass to charge ratio of the corresponding ion will be the mass divided by one or equal to its mass. At this point, the portion of the sample coming from the column has been turned into gas phase ions and is introduced into the mass spectrometer to be further separated before arriving at the detector. The details of how this separation is done are what make each mass spectrometry technique different. For time of flight mass spectrometry, the overall idea is relatively simple. Once inside the instrument, the charged ions are pushed towards the detector at the same time using the same voltage. An ion that has a small mass to charge ratio will travel quicker than an ion that has a large mass to charge ratio. The time that it takes a given ion to travel or fly to the detector is related to its mass and forms the basis for time of flight mass spectrometry. There are several key features of time of flight mass spectrometry that we use to aid in identification of individual compounds present in a given sample. The first is the accurate mass of the ionized compound being measured. For this reason, it is vital that the instrument is calibrated properly prior to starting the measurement and the calibration accuracy is constantly monitored using a solution of compounds with known masses that are measured throughout the entire analysis. A second key feature used in time-of-flight mass spectrometry is the abundance of isotopes for each ionized compound. For example, carbon can be found in nature with either a mass of 12 or a mass of approximately 13. The mass spectrometer will identify the same carbon-containing ionized compounds, such as morphine, at several mass-to-charge ratios based upon how many carbon-12 or carbon-13 atoms are present. Because the relative abundances of carbon-12 and carbon-13 are consistent and well characterized, we can use this to compare the expected relative abundances of an ionized compound found at multiple mass-to-charge ratios to what we measure with the instrument. In this figure, the red boxes are the expected abundances and the black peaks are the abundances that we measured in this sample. It's also important to realize that any atom present in the compound being measured that has naturally occurring isotopes will affect the mass to charge ratios and their relative abundances. A closely related concept that is another key feature used in time of flight mass spectrometry is referred to as isotope spacing. Similar to how the relative isotope abundances of an ionized compound found at multiple mass to charge ratios can be used for identification, the differences in the mass to charge ratio or the spacing between isotopes is also well characterized and consistent. Comparing the expected differences in mass to charge ratio to the measured differences provides yet another layer of compound identification. And just like isotope ratios, any atom present in the compound being measured that has naturally occurring isotopes will affect the mass to charge ratios and their spacing. Not surprisingly, the details of time of flight mass spectrometry are considerably more complicated than presented here. But hopefully this provides you with enough information to appreciate the key characteristics of time of flight mass spectrometry and to understand the various concepts used for compound identification. Thanks for taking the time to view this short video. And as always, should you have any questions about this video or how we're applying time of flight mass spectrometry to the clinical lab, please don't hesitate to contact us.